Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. We're continuing our look at uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel's last vision. Uh, we've been looking at Daniel chapter 12, the first few verses. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we have here each morning as we open your word together. And we know, Lord, that your spirit speaks to us and uh, we are encouraged by the things that we discover in your word. And we just pray, Lord, that we can encourage others, those around us with these truths. We know, Lord, that much of this is hard to understand. But uh, as we continue to look at these things, you give us a clear a discernment of truth, the light of the midnight cry that shines along our path. And so we pray for this study, that your Holy Spirit can speak to us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. Now, it's, it's going to be a, a little bit interesting on Sabbath, because I'm going to be doing this study on the symbolic use of numbers, and we're going to be looking at um, this uh, group that uh or individual i'm not sure how it how it works um but they they do some of the same things we do but there are some differences but i do believe that what they had done is connected with what we are doing that is just as the mind calendar prediction and you know the revelation 12 sign prediction and 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 even parminder and tess's prediction all sort of fit into our lines so there's this interesting date that they have, and we're going to look at that on Sabbath and how it's connected to our prediction and how it's connected to Nashville and everything. It's kind of interesting, but we're not going to look at that right now. The thing that I will note is that this 1190 shows up in their structure as well, though they don't notice it. That is, they don't recognize that it's a part of their structure. Uh, but it becomes a part of their structure as it's connected to our structure. So that's why they wouldn't notice it. Plus, they wouldn't understand the significance of 11.9, right? So, um, but here we have it, and this is just sort of a review of, of yesterday. We looked at Daniel 12, verse 1, and we looked specifically at the, the phrase, and at that time, um, which shows up three times in this verse now it's translated differently uh, they have that same time and at that time um, so you can see it twice it's translated as and at that time at the beginning of the verse and the third time and in the middle time that same time and then i discussed a little bit about um, what that would mean the doubling of it how would we translate this sentence and the way that i i look at it is that but when it comes to that same time, they could have translated it that way in, in the last instance as well. The idea here is that there is this specific time that is referring to time, uh, not just, you know, at that time, you know, it, it's actually referring to some, some things that are specific, even, even in the historical application. That is, there is a time that Michael shall stand up. That's the close of probation. As we make the historical, uh, as we take the historical application and we we parallel it with ours, it has to do with a type of close of probation in our history. And uh, we have here uh, February 11th, 2024, as part of this structure, which has to do with Stephen Jameson's birthday, which has this 1100 11,900 days and the 1,190 minutes as part of these symbols. And so it ties together 9-11 and 1989. And uh, of course, we can see in November 9th, 1989 is two times uh, H6256. And then we can see from 9-11, if we take that H1931, plus the H6256, that expression, and at that time, or that same time, and we look at that span, it's going to go to Stevens Jameson's birthday, February 11th, 2024, 
And of course, that's going to connect to 9-11 as well, right, with that 1190 minutes. So, so or 1190 days and 1190 minutes. And, and then we can see from uh, November 9th, 2019, there's 1555 days. The sum of the divisors of that is 1872. And of course, that's the primary way in which we look at July 18, 2020. And we have that with Lamech and, and, and others, all, all kinds of ways in which we have the 1872. But any iteration of those uh, four digits represents July 18, 2020. And we, we see other iterations. And, and we see later when it talks about um, shame, that's going to be reverse you know, um, reverse of that. So when it has uh, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt, the word shame is the reverse of 1872. It's 2781, which we already looked at before um, when we were dealing with uh, the crucifixion of Christ historically. The fact that it's a reverse of it um, is is a chiastic structure so, so those are things we're going to look at in more detail. But you know, there was a comment made, you know, about, well, you know, Stephen James's, Jameson is in this line here. It doesn't say anything about him as a person, right? Just like I'm, I'm in a line. It doesn't say anything about somebody that they're a prophet or anything like that. It's just simply we're part of these, of this history. All of us are. Some might have more symbols that are attached to these lines than others. And, and I think especially the ones who actually address the numbers, the people who are the chronologists and the mathematicians, you know, it makes sense that they, that, you know, me and Stephen and, and others, uh, Iran and so forth, Dwight and Dilio and Jeff and all that, that we're, we're connected. Our birthdays are connected with these lines as symbols. So now as we, we, we didn't write a lot of uh, footnotes in here regarding this. So I, I'm going to have to do that. But this, this idea of the 1931 and the 6256, the way in which these numbers relate to our lines, I think is, well, it, it, it's definitely not chance. I mean, and we have many double witnesses and sometimes triple witnesses of the, the structure that we see in front of us. But as far as understanding this verse, if we're going to put the present truth application into there, uh, we haven't really written in the historical application. So we would have to say when it talks about at that time, shall Michael stand up? Now, this gives us a span of time, right, that we can attach in the present truth application, right? So we can go from 9-11 to February 11, 2024. And we know in our history in 2024, we're marking the end of the divorcement, the divorce proceedings from Ezra chapter 10. And we know we can't predict the exact time of the close of probation. But what we have here is something that typically represents that. Right. So it represents it in a typical manner. So I guess what we would do here um, when Michael stands up, this is the close of probation for the world, can we, can we parallel this with a close of probation for the movement? That is, can we put a present truth application? Now, we're not, we're not giving a date for the close of probation for the world. We're not giving a, a date, you know, probation is going to close on this date for the movement. We're just saying that probation has closed for the movement. In, in a certain sense, and we'd have to understand what sense that is. But I, I don't know exactly how, how we would look at that. So we know that, that Michael stands up. He closes probation in 34 AD for the Jews, right? And, and that's typical of the close of probation for the world, right? Because Ellen White talks about even the close of probation October 22nd, 1844 was a close of probation for the Millerites. Now, I'm wondering if we cannot or if we should be able to to take these verses 
that is going from Daniel 11, verse 40, to Daniel 11, verse 4, and draw it on a line like we had been doing before, where we have a time of the end, and, you know, the first angel arrives, the second angel arrives, right? The third angel arrives. We have this close of probation and the events. Because I think we should be able to draw this on a line, but, which we're going to, I don't know if we can get that done today, but we're, we're going to think about it. I mean, it, it makes pretty much sense in that we have a time at the end and we have a close of probation and we have all of those events in between and we should be able to mark them out in a line properly. Right. So, so this diagram in front of you here, this is not a line that is, it doesn't have a period of darkness. It doesn't have like the time of the end marked with the arrival of the first angel. It doesn't have its formalization or empowerment. It doesn't have the second angel arriving and its formalization empowerment it doesn't have the third angel arriving. It's just a structural chronology that shows some of these symbols that we can tie these verses to the present. But it's insufficient in and of itself, right? That is, it, 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 it only exists meaningfully within a line. Does that make sense? Because the mistake that people make, and I, I'm seeing it all the time from people sending me stuff um, and posting stuff on Facebook and other places, is they don't seem to understand this. They just seem to think because they find a span of time that connects two days, that, that they have just created by, you know, taking 777 or 1260 and attaching it to some other waymark and creating a span of time that it, it then means something's going to happen on that date, right? And we're not predicting events ahead of time or anything like that. We're just simply measuring time. But when we measure time, they need to become a part of a line, right? They can't just... We can't just measure time and then interpret them however we want. So maybe, you know, when we address this, we, we can see there, there's a, parable, a, a parallel of the close of probation for the world with something that happens in our movement, because our movement is typical of that. So, I mean, I guess we could put, you know, the present truth is that there is a close of probation for the movement that is going to typify what happens at the close of probation for the world. Now, we've, we've already had some several way marks that we could mark as closes of probation. I mean, obviously, November 9th, 2019, we addressed as a close of probation. But for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we had 9-11 is the type of a close of probation. Right? That is, you can create a line from 1989 to 9-11 uh, that would be the close of probation and that would be taking jeff's earlier lines and and connecting those um to that and and then you know we look at things like you know december sit uh, december 6th 2020 you know that that's that's sort of like the close of probation and then you know 187 days oh, let me see after july 18th you're going to have the school of the prophets sold you know, so there's lots of different lines that could be created where we have a close of probation for the movement. But here, this close of probation for the movement, it seems that we would connect it to the present time, 2024, because of, at that time, going from the beginning of this movement, November 9th, 1989, to this symbolic date, which is Stephen's birthday, in 2024. Now, a number of things about Stephen's birthday. What, what, how could Stephen's birthday symbolize a close of probation? Okay, so February 11th is uh, the 42nd day of the year. Would that have any significance? And anything else about February 11th? I mean, it's Stephen's birthday, but 42nd day of the year. Anything else? Now, we already have the first day of the first month in 2024, January 1st, and April 10th, which is the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar, being marked in these lines as the end of the divorcement. Is there anything about February 11th that can help us connect to that? Or is the date not meaningful as a symbol in and of itself? 
So we have three spans of time that all can connect to these main dates, 1989, 9-11, and 11-9, right? So 11-9 and 89, 11-9 and 19, 9-11 itself connects to his, his first birthday when he's born, and he's going to be 55, or he was 55, on February 11th, 2024, right? We know it's 365 days past his 54th birthday, which is 1190 days past 11919. Anything else? Can it symbolize the close of probation? I would think that it could. Okay. In what way? The, what, why would you connect it to a close of probation as a symbol, not as the actual date that probation closes? Well, we know that there are going to be several closes of probation symbolic. Yeah. yeah. If we, if we were to look at the life of Christ, mm-hmm. we know that there was a close of probation for the leadership of the Jews at the time of his birth. Mm-hmm. We know that the close of probation for the Jewish nation began at the time of the crucifixion mm-hmm. and the close of probation was completed at the time of the stoning of Stephen. Yeah. And then, and still the execution of that is going to be uh, 36 years later in 70 AD. Right. But yeah. we have, we have close of probation, not as a point, but as a span of time. Yeah. So there is a number of events that's, that are happening right now. Now we know that um, if we took February 11, we can look at it as as two and two, right? Right. That is, we can we can look at the 11 years and the 11 years in the story of Joseph, uh, the first 11 years from his uh, captivity to the dream of the butler and baker, and then the next 11 years um, to the Jacob entering into Egypt and the fulfillment of Joseph's dream, right? As 11 but which gives us 22, a symbol of restoration. And and we could look at February 11th in that way too. It's, it's two and then one, one represents two, or we could, it represents 22, right? Right. In different ways, right? A different way. Um, it's also 40, the 42nd day of the year. So that represents the 42 uh, months, which... There is a type of close of probation that happens in 1798 for the papacy. So we, we can say that it's a symbol of a close of probation and that that close of probation for this movement, which we have been paralleling with 1850. So uh, this, you know, James and Ellen White, they're still part of the Millerite movement, you know, from 1844 onward. They're, uh, you know, they're accepted as part of that movement by many people, and yet they're still kind of on the outside, right? They're trying to present a message to the movement, um, but that message is being blocked. And Miller is not going to really understand what was being presented. And I would say the same thing is happening today with Jeff. So he's he's being blocked from understanding this, and and not just... You know, I mean, people obviously have prejudiced his mind, just as they did with Miller. And Jeff isn't looking at what we're presenting, right? So he doesn't have any idea. He just, you know, it's talked about as the antics of Theodore, which is really a mischaracterization of anything I've ever done. The one thing you could never use to describe anything I've done as antics. I definitely am not very dramatic. I don't do antics. I don't try to draw attention to myself. We're simply just studying. But, but Jeff has heard rumors that he interprets his antics. And, th- and those rumors started a long time ago, you know, right from the beginning when I came into this movement, especially once I, I knew Tavo. Reports have come to Jeff about me, suspicions, things that I was teaching on Facebook, supposedly. And, and Jeff would keep, you know, at that time, initially, he would clarify these things and find out, oh, these, these things are false. Even once, you know, in a meeting said, you know, now I see why people have been trying to create prejudice regarding Theodore. So he recognized it um, and and he recognized it not in, in a negative way, but 
like in the positive way that what I was presenting was true and that people within the movement were trying to withhold that truth from the movement. He recognized that, but yet he couldn't hold on to that. He couldn't continue to see that, right? He couldn't continue to see that because he knew it was, it was wrong what people were trying to do. And that's the thing I don't quite understand. If Jeff knew that the people in the movement were trying to not get him to listen to me because what I was teaching was the truth, why did he continue to listen to them? You understand what I'm saying? Like he recognized that it was not of God, the the gossip and the rumors and, and all these stories he heard about me. And yet he still continued to listen to those people to take their advice. And I find that kind of odd. I mean, because he would have to know that that Satan is working their minds right through all of this gossip. Why, why would we listen to gossip? But somehow Jeff has not been able to distance himself from that. Right. He's he's still continued to believe the gossip. And, and I'm not sure why. Right. Other than, you know, it's people he knows got a little bit off track there, but. But the idea here is that we have a close of probation for this movement. Jeff is paralleling Miller in what he's doing. And so with the rise of Jeff, right, the last day of our camp meeting, the last Sabbath of our camp meeting that we had in the summer, Jeff began to publish articles. And and he's continued to publish those articles. And those articles are a rejection of July 18, 2020. He speaks for the first time in our meetings, 1260 days after July 18, 2020, we would have to say that that's pretty significant. So we can see that that what he has done is he's rejected the foundation of this movement and the foundation of Adventism and really the foundation of Christianity. Because if you follow his arguments to their logical conclusion, that we predicted something and nothing happened, you definitely have to uh, reject Millerite history on that basis because that's the argument they use against Millerite history. And, and that's the mar- argument against Christ. You know, the Jews were predicting that, you know, Christ would conquer the Romans and he failed. He got crucified. And so his, pred- that prediction failed. So Christianity is just, is just one of those failed religions. Adventism is just another one, right, if you're going to follow that logic. Okay, so there's a comment here. Okay, even in, Dan, even in, even though 121 in Daniel 12, 1, so that's taking Daniel 12 as 121, is important. Okay, so, so you can see in Daniel 12, 1, you have 11 and 2. If you want to connect that to February 11th. And then is that January 21st, 1793? What is that, Angela? <laughs> yeah, but that's when Louis XVI was killed. But uh, I was just seeing the one to one. I was seeing Jan- January 21st. So I looked it up in the spirit of prophecy. And I just thought I'd share that because there you had a one and one and, and you know, a one, two, one, a two, eleven again, too. Yeah, and here's an example where Ellen White compares two different dates. The, the same date, one's a Julian and one's a Gregorian date. And, and she connects them with this 258 years. So she takes cognizance of dates, even though one's Julian and one's Gregorian, and she connects those two dates. So it has to do with, um, what, what's the date specifically that happens on January 21st? 258 years prior, so that's going to be um, what? What's the event specifically that she's referring to? There was, there was, I, think, I think there was somebody slain on then too, right? I, I, I guess yeah. there was a. Just trying to remember French, exactly. French, yeah, I was trying to find the name of that guy, and all I got was a whole bunch of martyrs of the French Protestants and Dutch Protestants. And, well, okay, I don't specifically know who it is, but I figured don't. No, uh, Daubigny, whatever his name, Daubigny knows. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be 1435. Yeah, 1435. And that's January 21, right? Is that what you're saying? 
that what we have there? Well, that's what it says in Spirit of Prophecy. Okay, it has to do with Martin Luther King. Martin, oh no, never mind. That's not Martin Luther, that's Martin Luther King. They have something about January 21st. Okay, so there's this anti-Protestant procession through Paris. Um, the affair of the placards. Uh, the French king leads an anti-Protestant pro- procession through Paris. Okay, so that's what she's comparing. So, I mean, it's very interesting that she does that, you know, from the perspective of what we have been studying. Now, and, and we have that uh, two and one and one, right? So it's, uh, and that ties to Daniel 12 verse one. Okay. You know, another thing just about, um, so just looking at some of these other numbers, wonder which ones, well, there's lots of numbers here that we could address. I probably should have done some of this stuff earlier. Yeah, some of these things a little bit obscure. I don't want to go into them right now. So we can say that this this verse is representing the close of probation. Of course, that's pretty obvious. It's the historical application. But within this movement, now I'm just trying to understand about Michael standing up. So that that's kind of what I was looking at here. So it says, um, at that time, shall Michael stand up? So we have 4317 plus 5975. So I haven't done this one yet. And it's uh, 10,292. So we can see it's it's going to be about 28 years around there. Yeah, 28 years and 65 days. So I haven't tried to put it into a span of time or anything like that. You know, often we go, you know, to 1989, to November 9th. And, you know, and it can bring us into, if we start on November 9th, it brings us to January 13th, 2018, which I don't see any significance in. If we went to December 25th, 1991, and we counted it, it bring us to February 28th, 2020. Nothing particular that I notice about that date. It's a Friday in 2020. So I don't know. I don't know if this is some something that we can put somewhere in our history. So at this point, and, and we have to connect it to some major waymark. We're not going to just connect it to, to any old thing we want. Connected to Stephen's birthday, it brings us uh, to April 17th, depending which year we start on into his birthday. It could be different April 17th. So I don't see any particular place we could use that. Um, if we start on 9-11, it brings us to November 15th, 2029, and which is the eighth day of the eighth month. As a symbol, that kind of makes sense. But... I don't know if that would be really significant. So, so what do we do with this, this span of time? So, so I don't know. I don't have anything to do with that span by itself. So when Michael shall stand up, I just, I don't have any connection with it. Now we could have, you know, other ways in which we look at this, other ways we add these numbers. He's going to be the great prince. Yeah, those together, that's 9,688. This might be far out, but could the 10292 be a word count of something you or somebody else has published? Okay, I don't know. Can just explain again. Came to mind. I was just thinking the, if the 10292 could actually be a word count of something you or somebody else has published during this time. You mean like a paper that has that many pages? Could be, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not saying, you know, it's a revelation or anything, but I thought, well, what does this signify? <laughs> yeah. And that came to mind. Yeah. And, and you could be right. There's lots of things it could represent. I mean, it's, uh, divisible, um, like 62 times, um, 166. So 166 represents FFA. Uh, is 10292 and 62 represents the 62 weeks and 62 is you know 31 times 2 right 31 being the the crucifixion so so maybe that's another way in which it connects just as a symbol with the number so but that's you know 
Michael shall stand up. Now, Michael himself, 4317, could represent a period of time. As a period of time, it's 11 years. I think we looked at that already. So if I go from 4317, it brings us, um, well, that's kind of interesting. Brings us to July 7th, 2013. Anybody know the significance of that date, July 7th, 2013? Well, July 7th as a symbol, we can understand that, right? Yeah, so I don't know. Some of these things, not everything's going to always fit. Anyway, we have some some symbols that we could attach. I'm going to have to think about this a little bit more. And some of these words we've run into before, such as uh, thy people, children, uh, stand up, uh, great. We we haven't addressed Michael before. And then, of course, we still have all of these different times. So one is we have the word time, 6256, occurs four times in this verse. Would that be significant that this word occurs four times? It should be. Yeah. So we know uh, the seven times in Leviticus 26 shows up four times. So the fact that a time here shows up four times in this verse would refer to the progressive destruction of four. So it's it's uh, really regarding a close of probation as well as a symbol. Now we got time of trouble. Now trouble 6869 is 18 years and... 294 days that uh, goes to July 2nd, 2020 from 9-11. So it ends up being 16 days short of, of that span of time. Okay. So, and then we have, well, 6256 as, as a span. I don't know if I can't remember if we counted it from 9-11 or not. Yeah, I think we did. That was Jeff's presentation in 2018. So we did that one already. <clears throat> and it's 6885 from 9-11 to uh, July 18, 2020. Okay, so it says, um, if we just look at this verse uh, again and just kind of see what it could be saying as far as the present truth application. And at that time, shall Michael stand up? So, So we have a time, a specific time that Michael stands up. Now, can we relate that to 9-11 itself? And we know the close of probation is still future. But just as a symbol, is there anything that connects 9-11 to the close of probation as a type? And we say that's the close of probation for the Seventh-day Adventist Church as, as an institution, as an organization. It doesn't say anything about individuals. Well, we could say the same thing occurred in, in, in the U.S., you know, and so many of the rights were, were, were taken away, you know, with the Patriot yeah. Act. Then there's spiritual formation coming into the SDAism. Yeah, yeah it was closed. And, and, renew, and, and uh, new dispensation seemed to be open. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that when it says at that time that we can mark 9-11 as a starting time, because that's when the mighty angel of Revelation 18 comes down. Right. Now it's not the close of probation, the general close of probation for the world when Christ says, let him that is righteous be righteous still, let him that is filthy be filthy still. Right. It's not that, but it is uh, typical of that. Right. It's, it's in preparation to that. So there's good reasons that we can start at 9-11 to measure some of these spans of time. 9-11 becomes this focal point. So, so that's why I would count some of these spans from 9-11. Now we have uh, some other numbers here. That's interesting. So the children of thy people is added together at 7092. Now we already had 7093 as a symbol or as a span. Um, uh, wasn't really a span of time, but we had that. And that's the number of days from 9-11 to Stephen Jameson's birthday uh, in 2021. So so we have, if we go from the end of 9-11 and we count 7092 days, it brings us to Stephen Jameson's birthday again, but in 2021. 
So I think that's kind of interesting because we already had this 7093 doing that. Now that would be a cardinal count. This would be an exclusive count. That is, it's not including uh, 911. I'm going to make a note of that. I know this can be a little bit uh, for people watching these things, like a little bit tedious what we're doing, but um, I think this is pretty significant in this context. So H1121 plus H, what was it? 5971 is equals 7292 days from the end of 9. 11 to Stephen Jameson's um, 52nd of birthday, which is 52 times 360 equals 18720, just as a reminder. Okay? <clears throat> so that becomes significant, I think in that context. So it keeps pointing us to Stephen Jameson's birthday in this passage as a symbol, right? This symbol of this close of probation. So we have that symbol, the children of thy people. And it says, uh, now there shall be a time of trouble. So we got 1961, 6256. Six. We've looked at those such as never was. So again, you're going to see that word 1961 is is the word that means to be, right? It's translated as there shall be, it's translated as was, it's translated as there was, right? And you're going to see that that, that it's a really common word. Uh, there was a nation even to that same time. Now, um, we've got, um, so again, you're going to have that same time, and then at that time, right, same phrase, Thy people, 5971, again, we have that word, shall be delivered, 4422, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So there's still a lot of words that we could analyze here as spans of time. But what, what we want to do is we want to try to say, how does this relate, just in the language of it, to a close of probation for this movement? So we have at that time, so we're saying at that time, is is 9-11. So when Michael stands up, we can say from 9-11 to the close of probation for the world, that that's historically what's being referred to, and that this can then symbolically be represented where we can have a period of time for this movement. Okay. And then we have the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. So we can say that this, this is representing, just repeating, it's a parallelism, right? So Michael's going to stand up, um, and he's the great prince which stands up, right? Because that word stand up and which standeth are the same Hebrew word. So he's going to stand up for the children of thy people. Now we know when this close of probation happens, and Christ stands up, and he stands up for the children of thy people. Like historically, the close of probation is that the judgment is found in the favor of the saints of the Most High. That is, it is not about people being lost at that judgment, the close of probation, even though that does occur. But the main reason that Christ stands up is he completes his work in the heavenly sanctuary on the Day of Atonement, which his work primarily is for God's people, right? We, we would agree with that because it's not going to be the judgment of the wicked that happens at the close of probation. Their probation is going to close, but God's people have been judged. The ones that have, that are now going to go through this time of trouble. So we, we can say that it's a separation of two classes of worshipers. But Christ is going to stand up on their behalf. And if we think about it in the context of Daniel's last vision, right, we have Michael in chapter 10, and we have him here in chapter 12. It's the same vision. And remember, Michael was there 
at the time that Babylon fell, right? He, well, he's there when Babylon falls, and he's also there working upon the higher part of Cyrus in 536, right? During Daniel's prayer. And so if we think about the, this whole context of this story, what has happened is he's now going to explain to him the 2520 and the end of the world because he already understands the 70 weeks and the 2300 days, but he doesn't understand um, the connection of all of these things to the 2520 and to what happened in the past to what's going to happen in the future. So that's why this vision is given. So when he says at that time, shall Michael stand up? The angel here is explaining to Daniel what he's been started in chapter 10, right? Chapter 11 is, is going to be this explanation. And so this, this is a specific time saying at that time, Michael shall stand up, right? He's already been there before in this conflict with Satan, but he's going to come at the end of the world. And he's the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. But when that happens, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. So so that same time is the same as that time that Michael shall stand up. So all the way through that history, there's good, there's been times of trouble, but this is the time of trouble that's going to be coming. And, and that's going to be, of course, uh, Jacob's time of trouble. And then it says, at that time, my people shall be delivered. So you can see why he stands up, why he's the great prince that standeth up for the children of thy people. So those that are found written in the book. So we know that uh, that this is um, you know, the book of life, right? And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. I know we've studied this already. We understand that this is the special resurrection. This is not everyone that sleeps in the dust of the earth that awakes, but it's some of them, right? All right. So there's going to be a lot of people, and then it's going to be a division division of them. Some of them are going to awake to everlasting life in the special resurrection, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, right? And we, we see that word shame is 2781, which we talked about already, is a reverse of 1 to 7 2. And then it talks about the wise, right? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness um, as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, um, so there's lots of numbers there for us to analyze. It's kind of interesting, this word righteousness, 6663. You notice it's 30 more than 6633, which is the number of days from 9-11 to November 9th, 2019. And so we're going to have to spend a bit of time analyzing lots of these numbers. Also, it's interesting that um, we have shame, 2781, which is a reverse of 1872, shame and contempt, everlasting contempt. And everlasting contempt is 1860. We know 186 is the number of cardinal days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So it's dealing with the Day of Atonement as a symbol. Now, uh, 5769, that's everlasting. So 5769 is from 9-11. It brings us to June 28th, 2017, the second day of the fourth month. So there's some interesting things there relating to uh, the chiasm where we have June 22nd as the center of the 777 chiasm. June 28th, of course, is later. It's actually uh, 186 days or 187 days past the, the, the date there. So let me see here. That's going to be March 24th, I think, is the date. And then we go. No, it's not 186. It's what? 
trying to remember. Okay, so it's going to be half of that. Anyway, it's, it's related to that. So it's going to be 100 days, 96 days. Anyway, this is kind of obscure stuff. But um, so we could look at these spans of time. And there's probably some structure that would uh, come out of that if we spent. And I'm going to look at some of these words a little more closely. Sorry, I'm going to have to do this. Yeah, so a bunch of different symbolic dates show up. Not, not particularly, it, it's just sort of, uh, like there's not anything that I can see yet that's like a, a complete structure, but I'd probably have to put all of these numbers on a line. If I started all of them at 9-11 and I put every single one of these words as counting spans of time from 9-11, we'd probably find quite a few different things. So I'm just adding things together, sorry about that. Yeah. Lots of little interesting dates, but I don't think anything that, that it by itself is going to be significant. I don't know if I want to work through all of that right now. I want to look at some of these words. Yeah, lots of different things that we could look at. Okay, so I'm not really sure exactly what to do. Some of this stuff I'm going to have to draw it online, which we're going to start next week. So those names that are found, uh, they shall be delivered, everyone it shall be found written in the book. Um, so there's some significance in some of these symbols here. And then the special resurrection. Now, if we're going to have people's names found or people that are found written in the book, how would we apply that in the present truth application of this? Well, those who are faithful uh, have their names in, remaining in the book of life. Yeah, okay. So I think it's yeah. just an encouragement. To us to study. Okay, so when we talk about this book, you know, we've done this study before, but there is a book that's sealed with seven seals in the hand of the one um, seated upon the throne, right, in Revelation chapter four and five. You have this book sealed with seven seals. No one can open that book except the lamb that has been slain that has seven horns and seven eyes, which is Christ. Christ comes and dies. He can open up that book. It's seen in his hand, sealed with seven seals. And then John sees Christ as a lamb that's been slain with seven horns and seven eyes. Right. And and of course, that re represents his his omniscience and his uh, omnipotence. Right. Seven horns and seven eyes. Omniscience is the eyes. Horns is the power. OK. And that book in that book contains in symbolic language the history of the world, Ellen White says. Now, then a portion, there's going to be a little book that's open, that's going to be eaten by John, right? Bitter in his belly, but sweet in his mouth. And that's the book of Daniel itself, a portion of that book. So the book, now we could say it's the book of life, but within within God's word is God's word the book of life it is to me yes okay so it is the book of life and our names being written in this book it's not so much i mean obviously god has a record of everything he knows everything but there isn't like this book that he writes down in literally but we can see that the whole history of the world that is of of individuals and nations is can, is contained in god's word and and it's contained in symbolic language now, I don't know if people remember the Bible code, um, where we take these Hebrew numbers or Hebrew letters as numbers and, and, and we also can take phrases by creating these different matrices, um, you know, counting like every seventh letter and things like that. But, but I believe that's partly true. I mean, I, there's people can manipulate those things because you can't predict the future with it. And that's what people always try to do. But. We can see that there is a structure in God's word that that records every single event and every single person that, in a sense, we can say that the Bible is like DNA. DNA can contain a lot of information. Correct. Yes, it sure can. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we are a product of DNA and, and we can contain a lot of information. There's a lot more information. God's word is is using. Uh, all of these symbols 
that can be understood in different ways. They can be understood as numbers, they can be understood as letters and parts of words, and they can be structured in different ways. And, and, and we can even take like the Hebrew numbers and we can take, you know, Gematria and all these different things. We can take it in different languages. And you're going to find that what is recorded in God's word is the history of the world of every individual. And there are some who are going to be found written in that book in, in a positive sense, right? The ones that are going to be delivered. And, and there's ones that aren't, right? They're not going to be delivered. They're not going to be found written in the book. That is, God's judgment is going to be against them. So we can say here that uh, this book is addressing the Bible. And it's also addressing the book of Daniel, right? Because he's going to say, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, right? And so you can see that word end, that's Kate's 7093. That goes to Stephen Jameson's 52nd birthday, right? If we do a cardinal count, if we do an exclusive count, it's 7092. And then many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So we have uh, those that are studying God's word at the time of the end. Now, us running to and fro, so we would have to look at uh, this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm copying this. I'm putting it into this uh, gematria thing. Okay, so I have to get rid of all these Hebrew numbers, but seeing if there's any significance in this. So this this phrase, many shall run to and fro. If we add up the, the Hebrew numbers there, uh, 7093, 7227, 7751, 1847, and 73, 7235. So I think this is just adding them up as individual numbers. Okay, I see. So that's adding up the individual numbers. I guess I can't get it to add them all up as separate ones. I have to do that manually. Okay. So I'm going to add these up. So we got 7093 plus 7227 plus 7751 plus 1847 plus 7. Three, uh, seven, two, three, five. If I did that correctly, it would be 24,653. Nope, I did it wrong. So let's do this again. 7093 plus 7227 plus 7751 plus 1. Eight four seven plus seven two three five. Okay, so thirty-one thousand one hundred and fifty-three. So we have a symbol there of thirty-one, which is um, the crucifixion of Christ, and one fifty-three, just as a number. So there's the number by adding, many shall run to and fro and know that shall be increased. Now, as a span of time, I could look at that. Right, it's going to be a lot of years, 85.29 years. So I don't know if I would use it in that way. It is a prime number. It's the 3,356th prime number. Anything else about this number? 153 and a 31. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first thing I said. So we got the 153 and the 31. So the number of fishes and the crucifixion of Christ. Now, does the 153 represent what we are doing? I mean, we, we've talked about the 153 here and there. We've never done a complete study on it. We know it's related to 1533 and the 1335, but it primarily comes from the story of, of the fishes, the, the number of the fishes that they catch. It also occurs in Millerite history, the 153 days from... Uh, Samuel Snow first writing his letter to the last letter published. It's 153 days. 
154 in an ordinal count, right, which is 77 times 2. So 153 is 77 plus 76 is another way to look at that. And then we have the 31. And, and I don't know where we could take, you know, that number as a span of time, 85 years and whatever the remainder is of days. Right. So 85 and like a third. Well, in the story of the 153 fishes, they had toiled all night. So they were toiling in their own strength and night, of course, well, it's good for fish, but it's not, maybe not good for men's eyesight. And when they followed Christ's instructions, that's when they caught the 153, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah, it's then, the difference between following your carnal mind and following your own efforts to achieve something and in, and listening to Christ and following him and then having having abundance. Isn't that what we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, it does become a symbol of of using numbers. Right. I mean, lots of people look at the 153 fishes and try to make sense out of it, what it what it symbolizes. You know, so it's probably something more for the study on Sabbath dealing with the symbolic use of numbers. But but I think it represents um, a measurement of time. And, and the reason is that from Usher's date for the creation of the world, 4004 B.C., which is October 22nd, Miller is going to add 153 years to that. Right. So he's going to have. uh, uh 4157 BC as the, right? So he's going to add the 153. And then if you go there and you add 1843, right, you're going to get this I subtracted. If you add the 1843, what did I got there? So it should be 4157 plus 1843. Right, you're going to get the 6,000 years. So that's the way that Miller had done it. And now it was interesting. So some people have taken this as Miller must have been correct because, you know, the creation of the world, October 22nd, uh, 4157 BC. And then 6,000 years later, you're going to have October 22, 1844. Right. Obviously you have to account for there's no zero year in the math, so that bring you to 1844. Except that you wouldn't have using Usher's calculation as October 22nd, 4157 BC, because he's using the, the autumnal equinox to start the first of Tishri, and that doesn't fall on October 22nd. But, uh, but also we know from the biblical chronology that that's not correct, that Usher made mistakes, or not Usher, but uh, Miller made mistakes in correcting Usher's chronology. So, so it just doesn't work. But it becomes a symbol of time, the 153. And so it's something we, we need to look at a little bit more. Now, but those that are, are running to and fro are those that are studying God's word. And the symbols that are going to be there are the crucifixion of Christ, 31 AD, the midst of the week, the chiasms, and 153, the number of the fishes. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. And we'll come back to this on Sunday and uh, continue looking at these numbers. Okay, let's uh, close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we had to study here this morning. We pray for your continued uh, presence in our lives. Forgive us for our sins. Help us to trust in you. And may you bless each person searching for truth. We pray for the studies uh, to tomorrow evening and on Sabbath. And we just pray for your continued help in our personal studies that we can come close to you and receive of your strength. May your angels watch over us and keep us and our family and friends as well. And we pray this in Jesus name. Amen.